Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Now that I've gotten some really good tools to do a bunch of bulk mining, I'm trying to think of how I want to streamline the process of getting resources and processing them. So one of the first things that I want to do is I want to get my backpack in order, and I want to get my, well, I guess more accurately, I want to get my other backpack in order. So I made an additional golden backpack. This is my original one. This is the new one, completely empty. So I want to make use of the Iron Backpack upgrades to make a backpack that's just for mining. And I wanted to do a couple things. I wanted to suck everything up into it that's just general mining stuff, stuff that I just want to take back and process, ores and things like that. And I also wanted to delete the garbage that I get while I'm mining, the stacks and stacks and stacks of cobblestone and stuff like that. So let's do that. It's relatively simple. That's for the mining filter upgrade. That's going to make it pick up just the mining stuff that I want. Paper upgrade core and ink sack. That makes the void filter upgrade. So this is going to allow me to avoid... Uh, avoid. <laughs> going to allow me to void or delete any, anything that I want. So stuff like cobblestone. And this is the quick deposit upgrade. I don't know if I'm going to make use of this just yet. But basically that allows you to dump the contents of an entire backpack into an inventory. So if I come back from a long mining trip and, you know, my bag's kind of full and I want to dump it all to be processed, uh, it should be pretty easy. I can just hold down sneak and right click on the inventory and it should dump the whole thing. So let's install them. And I think it's getting dark. Yes. I might have to configure them a bit. Uh, so this is my current one. Let's... So if you sneak and then right click while holding it, it opens up this. I, yeah, I can name it. So let's give this a name so I can differentiate them by at least the name, if nothing else. I'll just call this general, just for like general storage. And I'll call this one mining. Okay. Is this how I put the upgrades on them? Yes. Can I put multiple at the same time? No. Now my mining backpack should have all of them. It does. So yeah, some of the upgrades pre pre present you with like an interface like this that you can do something with, others don't. So you don't see the quick deposit one here because there's nothing to configure. But the void and the mining filter, um, there are things you want to configure with them. With the mining filter, you don't have to configure it to get it to do something. It's automatically configured to take in the basic uh, ores and stuff like that. It's already configured to suck those things up. Um, however, you know, with so many mods, there may be additional types of ores and stuff that you want it to suck up. And so if you do want that, you can just manually define some stuff. And the void filter is not going to void anything unless you tell it what to void. So let's put a piece of cobblestone in there. So now, now that it's in there, if I drop this piece of cobblestone, and because it's here in the void filter upgrade on this backpack. Didn't even make a noise. Yep, just deleted it. Not in the backpack or anything. Beautiful. And you may wonder if I'm going to have an issue with running out of cobblestone, because I have had to mine for it in the past. Well, that's not going to be an issue for very long. I've got a bit stored up here, and I do have everything I need to make the mining upgrade. Well, actually, I don't quite have everything I need, but um, I just basically I just need to make the resonator, and that is something that I definitely can make. I can make all of these things, and then I'll be able to make this, and this will allow me to make a infinite cobble gen without me having to do anything. So I'm not too worried about cobblestone anymore. That's in our very near future. Okay, uh, let's open up general. So I'm going to keep my special tools packed away for the most part because they're not something you want to generally use in case you accidentally like you know if you want to just pickaxe one block but you're accidentally using your hammer so it pickaxes a, a three by three and then just like destroys a bunch of machines you don't want that it's not something you want to use around your base you only want to use them for bulk mining so I'm gonna store them away unless I'm gonna go out and do something specific So I'm about to go mining, but durability is a problem, so let's go ahead and throw an emerald on this thing. I left it one extra slot, so that will increase the... What's that bonus speed plus... F oh, that... 
That's there normally, right? I just... Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's from the redstone. Uh, so throwing a world on it will make the durability go up by 50%, so from 2,000 to 3,000. And let's go bulk mining and see how this thing works. Alright, um, I guess I'm just gonna mine to the bottom of the earth. Yeah. I guess so. I kinda want a full, like, <laughs> vertical slice of the world because there's different ores that appear at different Y levels. Some only appear at higher levels, some only appear at lower levels. Diamonds are quite low. And for example, I think copper and tin and lead kind of occur not quite at the bottom, but somewhere around like 30. Well, copper appears on the surface, but lead and tin, I think, only appear around Y30 to 40 or something like that. So I want to get, like, all the materials so I can fully configure the backpack. But when you're mining straight down, there's always the chance that you'll fall into a chasm or lava or something like that. So let me throw my jetpack on. So if that does happen, I'll still live. Get a full sample of everything and see what we want to void. Like, for example, the andesite. Do I want to void that? I don't know. See... Wasn't that used by something that I had to gather specifically to get it? There was something I needed to use it for. I don't remember what. Actually, no, it wasn't the andesite. It was the granite. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to avoid it. I can always... It's easy enough to get more if I need it. So let's add that to the filter. Drop that. Should get deleted. There we go. Yeah, so this is the stuff that I guess I will keep. Wait. Wait, what? It's getting deleted? Why is, and why is granite getting deleted? It's not in the void filter. I don't understand. Huh. That's odd. I'm kind of freaked out. I hope it doesn't accidentally delete diamonds or something. How about the chimerite? So moist bee chunks doesn't do anything with. Let's see, does that actually have any practical use? You can manually dry it on a drying pallet into dried peat. I think this becomes something you can burn, but it's like really terrible. And then that... So if you dry it, you can turn it into one fourth of a piece of coal is what this is equal to. Yeah, let's just avoid that. Yep, so I'm going to keep doing this and configure this to my liking. Between this tool and the backpack, it is so fun to mine. Oh my god. Just pounding through the wall. I love it. Yeah, look at how much I've gotten already. Six diamonds, almost three stacks of redstone. It's beautiful. Anyway, uh, I'm going to keep mining some more. I just went back and repaired the hammer. It broke quite quickly. Yeah, let's get some more. My hammer gained a level, so I gained another modifier slot, and I'm going to throw a bunch more redstone in it to change the bonus speed from, I think it was 40% to plus 60%, from 8.81 to 10.25. Nice. Okay, so now I have a whole crap ton of things that I've mined. And this is basically my, my sample. Now that I've got a pretty big sample size, this should comprise virtually everything that I would mine. So I think what I want to do now is set up some sort of big kind of processing point where I can just run up to a chest or something, and then using the deposit upgrade, just dump the whole thing into a chest. And then I want it all to be sorted. So I want this all to go to wherever it should go. Some of the stuff I suppose I'll just route to a chest that I then pick it up from and then stick it back in the storage system. Or perhaps I'll insert it into the storage system automatically, I don't know. Stuff like redstone and things like that. But, um, but ores that need to be processed. Things that need to be put in the crusher, or in the case of these rock hounding ores, things that need to be put inside of the, uh, what are they called? The bloomeries. Yeah. So central location, you could dump everything and it just knows where it should go and then transports it over there. So basically a bunch of automation. I want to automate the whole kind of 
ore gathering and processing part. So let me think of how I would actually accomplish that and I'll be right back. Okay, so before I can really launch into getting the processing chain up and going fully, I'm going to have to do quite a few things before that. So ultimately what I want is you dump it into a chest and then it probably gets deposited onto a conveyor belt and then it goes through an item router from immersive engineering. I've never actually used one of these. In fact, I've never even seen it, but I'm pretty sure this thing will, uh, I think it will allow you to divide like which direction you want an item to go to. So it can come in from one side on a conveyor belt. And then based on what type of item it is, I can redirect it. I can route it to one of, I guess, three other conveyor belts. And I want everything to be on conveyor belts because it's immersive. It's cool. I mean, I could have everything just go in a pipe, but I think conveyor belts would be really cool. So that's my plan. However, to make conveyor belts, I need a bunch of hides, which I don't have. I could go kill more cows, but remember, I don't like killing cows. So I was looking for other ways to get leather. And you can do it quite easily in the Atomic Reconstructor. Just one rotten flesh can be turned into leather, and I have tons of rotten flesh from the mob farm. I've got almost 300. So it'd be trivial to get as much leather as I want if I had the Atomic Reconstructor. Uh, I was looking at what it takes to make it. And we're gonna have to make two new machines to be able to make it. For the Emerald Electron tube, aside from being very, very expensive in emeralds, um, we're gonna have to make the Thermionic Fabricator. And... And to make Stone Burnt, I'm also gonna need the Resonator. Thermionic Fabricator and Resonator which are also, I think, kind of the next things to do in my quest log that I haven't looked at in 50 million years. Yeah, Thermionic Fabricator and Resonator. Oh, it even gives you upgrade bases. That's handy. That'd give me a jump start on making the mining upgrade to get the cobblestone generator going. Yeah, so let's do it. Oh, right, I never claimed this. Um, this is the quest for the Crusher. Make a crusher and you get 16 bauxite ore, which turns into aluminum. Titanium. Oh, I'm actually cooking up some titanium right now. So titanium is a byproduct of the bauxite, the aluminum, and the crusher. I was thinking you could just throw it into a normal furnace, but uh, it turns out it can only go in certain things such as the crude blast furnace. Actually, is that enough to finish the quest? Was it seven? Need one more. There we go. Sweet. Okay, so let me get all the stuff together to make those two machines. I've got everything for the resonator except the pulsating iron nuggets. So I can now make these thanks to the metal alloy. A combination of ender dust, one ender dust to three iron dust. And ender dust is just made by putting ender pearls through the macerator. So let's make a couple of these. Six of that, and two of that. Should do it. Yep. So that will allow me to make the resonator. Let me start working on the thermionic fabricator. I think I've got everything together. So here's everything for the thermionic fabricator. Much double insulated gold. Insulating glass. Which is a little bit of a strange recipe. Iron powder, green, and glass. Sturdy casing and a diamond chest. This one is pretty expensive. It's basically just a normal chest with a bunch of iron around it, and then that chest with a bunch of gold around it to turn into a gold chest, and then with two diamonds and a bunch of glass to turn into a diamond chest. But there's a thermionic fabricator. And this one. For the resonator. And I should complete a couple quests. Oh, right, this one we don't need to just have the resonator, but we need to also make solar panels with it, I guess. So that one's not done, but this one is. Diamantine Electron Tube. Don't know what that's for. Does that have any specific use? Albiary, Industrial Apiary. Energy Cell Frame. Hmm. Okay, let's... Hook these up, and I don't have enough LB connectors, which is why 
Got the hardened clay cooked up in here so I can make some more. Just copper and hardened clay to make LV connectors. Mmm, not quite. I have too much of something. Ah, too much hardened clay. There we go. Alright, let's just plop these machines down and see what they do. Never used them before. Never used either one of these. Where shall they go? Oh, yeah, this, this is hideous. Let me get rid of that. Hmm, I guess I could put them, like, here. Yeah, that's fine. I'm assuming the resonator takes power. I don't actually know if it does. Oh, actually, I don't think the resonator does. No power used slash generated. Yeah. Okay. Didn't actually need to make that LV wire connector. But this does need power. There we go. Already full. Okay, so these two things are going to allow me to make what I need for the... Uh, the... What was it? <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. Leather... Atomic Reconstructor. That's it. Yes, so... Five emeralds. And a couple redstone. And, oh, right, I need liquid glass as well. Okay. Well, I have a bunch of emeralds here. And a bunch of redstone here, too. I think that was it. So this is the recipe. These are the ingredients to make this recipe. I need the glass. Or just sand. It can melt it down either way. And I think I need the resonator to make some sort of... Um, I think I put like a gold pressure plate in the resonator. Grab some sand. Grab a whole bunch of sand. I got so much of that. Yeah, so... Gold pressure plate. This one. The uses... Resonator. Oh, wait. No? What? There must be something else I need the resonator for. I'll have to look it up. I totally forgot. Oh, I've got too much redstone in it. There we go. Missing liquid resources? That's okay. So this is... I believe once it hits this bar, it'll melt the sand down into liquid glass. And then it should start producing the things I need. Okay, so what was the other thing? Stone burnt resonator. Ah, right. Polished stone. Which it Whoa. What? Hydrochloric acid. Uh, and reinforced stone? That stuff that took 50 years to get? No, no thanks. Let's go with... Living rock. Very, very easy. Living rock, smelt it, and you're good. Okay, so the resonator won't work. It said it didn't need any power, but that's because at the time it didn't need any power. Now that I've got some of the polished stone inside of it, waiting to make the stone burnt, now it says grid is overloaded, can't make it. So it looks like... I'm not entirely sure how to interpret this. I assume it needs 8 GP. I don't know why it has... It seems like it says it has 0 .04, which doesn't make any sense. It shouldn't have any. I don't know. But anyway, it definitely needs power. And remember the quest book wants you to make the resonator and solar panels. So the solar panels are one of the things you can use to get the uh, the GP, which is basically Extra Utility 2's own power system. It's totally separate from RF and EU and all that stuff. So using the polished stone, which is the precursor to the stone burnt, some resonating redstone crystals and lapis. Each batch gives you three solar panels. I think I need eight GP and each one of these should give me one. So let's get nine. I just earned a million achievements for some reason. Okay. And we've now completed the quest. What is Lunar Reactive Dust? I'm almost certain I'm going to want the upgrade base. 
But just in case... Oh, it's just made in the resonator. Just lapis to lunar reactive dust? Oh man, I definitely want the upgrade bases, because the upgrade bases are pretty expensive, right? Oh, never mind, they're not. Eh, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter that much either way, but what is this used for? Colored stone. CAD colorizer. Used in making a wax cast. Okay. Oh, it's used in actually 44 different pages of crafting ingredients, all sorts of things. Slick plastic block. Plastic block, so mostly just kind of like random stuff. Doesn't seem super important. Anyway, let's grab the upgrade bases. Okay, um, where should I put these? They need to have line of sight to the sky, so putting them in the forest is probably... Yeah, not gonna work. I mean, ideally they'd be, like, on something. Some sort of a platform. But... For now, I'm just gonna put them on the beach. <laughs> God, that's ugly. I mean, it's not that ugly, it's just silly. They really should be on a platform. No. So grid power is quite different from RF and EU. There's, it's, it's a very strange power system. I really don't know why they decided to go with their own entirely different power system from everything else. Nothing else uses it. It only uses GP, grid power. And one of the strange things about it is that you don't have to connect grid power. It, grid power also can't be stored in any way. There's no throughput, there's no wires, basically just Oh, it's because it's turning nighttime. Damn it. Needs to be day for the solar panels to work. Basically, if you're running something like this, the resonator, and it requires eight grid power, then you simply need eight grid power. And if that is met, it goes. If it is not met, it doesn't go. So it's not like if it runs out, it slows down or something like that, or it, you know, starts to get slower. And it can run on a trickle. Nope. What? They said they did one GP each. Why am I only getting four? Are they somehow blocked from the sky? Oh. Oh yeah, there's tree leaves directly above it. Whoops. Um. Alright, you are gonna come down. I'm sorry. What the? That didn't work too well. Am I? What? It's supposed to take down the whole thing. Why is it not? It's only taking down three. What the heck? That's odd. It's not how it behaved with the oak. Dark Oak special, somehow? Okay, that all went. Alright, that should do it. There it goes. And then I haven't actually checked the thermionic fabricator. Looks like it is done. Excellent. So how are we looking on stuff to make the atomic reconstructor? I'm pretty sure we still need more stuff. There we go. Got everything together. The Atomic Reconstructor is an interesting thing, the way it works. It's pretty cool. 
So we're gonna want a button. That's not how you spell button. How do you spell button? Button, button, mutin. Any stone becomes a button, okay. Oh, crap, I don't have any stone. <laughs> I could make a wooden button, but nah. I probably have some stone over here. Alright. So we're gonna put that down, we're gonna need to connect it to power. That face a different way. There. We go. Hold a redstone torch to toggle. Right, this thing doesn't have a GUI, and by default, for some reason, it just constantly shoots, which we don't want. It's wasting power. Actually, while I'm here, let's grab the stuff we're going to use to make leather. So it turns zombie flesh into leather. Let's grab a whole stack. Pulse. Okay, so now it will pulse when it receives a redstone pulse. Such as from a button. Yeah, this thing holds a lot of power. So if we look at leather and how it's made in the Atomic Reconstructor, basically one round flesh becomes leather with 8,000 RF. And I believe that's per item, so if I drop this whole stack, I think it's going to try to use 8,000 RF times 64. I'm not sure what happens if it runs out of power. It probably just won't convert the whole stack. And I don't know how much 8,000 times 64 is, but let's just drop the whole thing and zap it and see what happens. At least a lot of it will turn into... Leather. Put it down. Yep, there we go. Yep, things out of power. Made uh, a little bit less than half the stack. So there we go. Just throw a bunch of rotten flesh on the ground, press a button, and we get leather. Don't need to kill any more cows. Yay. Save the moo-moos. Oh, hello. I haven't had an Enderman in my base ever, I think, other than the Ender Minis. So, what else can we make with the Atomic Reconstructor? What can it be used for? I think it, yeah, it can be used for all sorts of things. All the, all the Actually Editions mod, it's from the Actually Editions mod. All the Actually Editions mod stuff pretty much requires things made in it. Yeah, the basics being Redstone to Restonia Crystal. Only takes a tiny bit of RF to do that. Lapis to that. Diamond. Diamond. Diamantine? Diamantine crystal. Emerald to that. Ah, yes, and iron to Anori crystal is very common too. So, at some point I need to look at the Actually Editions stuff and see what I could make, because I could probably make most stuff in Actually Editions. Although there is this kind of tier 2, um, probably not most stuff, there is this sort of tier 2 crafting thing in Actually Editions. This sort of, um, I don't know what you'd call it, sort of like transmutation table where you put something in the center and then you have a bunch of platforms, like pedestals around it, and you put a bunch of different ingredients on the pedestals and then the whole thing uses a ton of power and transforms. So, I guess I can't make that stuff, but anyway. I've got a lot of weird junk in my inventory that I don't have any room for, so let me clear my inventory and make a bunch of conveyor belts. Alright, got a stack of conveyor belts. Should be enough for now. Let's finally make that item router. And let's see how the heck this thing works. Again, never used it before, never even seen it used. So let's just place... Oh. Let's place a bunch of this down, and then... Put an item router. Oop. 
Let's have it split out. Oh, yeah, that doesn't work like that. It's gotta be like that. Okay, has a GUI. Can do OR dictionary. So I don't think I've ever explained the OR dictionary. I don't, entire, I don't entirely understand it myself, but I think the basic idea is there's lots of different varieties of certain ORs, like there's a bunch of different mods that have all sorts of copper ORs. And putting on the ore dictionary basically makes it so if you put one type of copper in a filter, it'll consider that as being uh, a match for any type of copper from any mod. MBT data, bleh, fuzzy, no need to go into those, those don't matter. So top, bottom, north, east, west, south, okay. So there's eight slots per side. Huh. That should be enough to work with. Yeah, so let's test this. So this... What direction is this? Oh, I guess I can look at the minimap. This is south. So for south, let's say cobblestone goes south. And iron goes north. Oops. So now if I drop a bunch of that down... <laughs> Look at that! Perfect! Yeah, this is totally going to do what I want it to do. So... I guess I'm going to have 24 different things I can filter from the input. Because I can go forwards, left, or right. There is a top and a bottom, but... Um, I mean, let me test this. If I put this on top... Is it going to just, like, pop up there onto the conveyor belt? Doesn't seem like it should, but it might. So let's say, say cobblestone goes up there. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, I probably just need one item router, really, then. That should pretty much do it. I'm a little bit curious about some of the other stuff. So there's multiple types of conveyor belts. There's a basic one, there's also dropping, vertical, and splitting. I'm curious how these work. Especially the splitting. Is there any sort of... What I'm wondering is, is there a sort of filter that you can tell it which way you want it to split? Or does it just split things in half? Like if you send a stack of 20 cobblestone down this, will it just send 10 in one direction and 10 in the other? Let's try it. Oh, no, not that. Just make one of that. Oh, no. When you have a path like this and you put a block on top of it, it turns it back to dirt. Rip. So... Where's my cobblestone? And cobblestone. Oh, <laughs> they're facing the wrong direction. Whoops. Huh. I don't understand. How do you control which side it goes onto? I mean, it goes to the center of the conveyor belt always, right? Oh, maybe it alternates. Maybe it's only going one direction because it's a whole stack. What if I... Uh, let's do this, like, separate them. Right. Left. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right, okay, yeah, that's what it does. So items, if you put them like really close together and they're of the same type, they tend to be grouped together into the same thing. Basically considered as one unit. Like that, you see how 
the second one kind of goes like bloop okay and then it gets added to it i think it's a performance thing it groups them together so if you throw them down like pretty quickly they kind of clump up and they're considered one item hence why it sends multiple of them down just one side but if you separate them out and they're actually separate then it does alternate okay not sure if i have any use for that Now, I guess the dropper's pretty self-explanatory. I don't know if you can do anything fancy with it, or if it just drops everything that goes over it just straight down. Like, if you send a stack of 60 cobblestone over it, will all 60 drop down? Or will just one drop down and the rest keep going? Or or what? I guess I can have everything to make it. Let's, let's try it out. I need a little bit more iron, but I just made a bunch more. I'm actually running pretty low on iron. Let's make one of these. Make the dropping conveyor belt. So let's put this on top. Gonna have to rearrange these. Right, that's not gonna... There we go. So, still configured for the top to be the cobblestone. So we throw 10 cobblestone down. What's gonna happen? All of it drops. Okay, so then there's no point... I don't really get the point of it. There's no point in having the conveyor belt continue past this because everything will simply drop out of it, right? So then how is having a dropper any different than just cutting this off and letting it fall? I guess maybe it's more precise or, I don't know, maybe it looks a little bit cooler. Like, this accomplishes the same thing, doesn't it? I guess it is more precise. Hmm. Okay, well, I think I understand the conveyors pretty well. You know, I keep forgetting to do this, so let's just do it right now. I moved the ponsel out of here so I can make this a path. There. And I'm also going to do the pathway all the way up to the portals. And also, look at this. Since I destroyed all of it, it got even worse. Now, rather than just two of them never turning into grass, now three of them never turn into grass. Wonderful, huh? Nice little path. What about something like this? So right about here, it's pretty close to all the industrial stuff where I'm going to need to send most of the supplies. I used factory blocks for this, and then a big diamond chest in the center, because I want to make sh sure... Oh, right. I forgot, chests can't be open if there's a block above them. So that's got to go. Uh, but yeah, I made it a diamond chest, because I want to make sure that... The mining bag, which is already quite big. I want to make sure that there's enough space that I can take everything from the mining bag. And I guess this is kind of overkill, but it's fine. Can't hurt. Yeah, so I'm going to add it back to this thing, of course, but I'm imagining from the front it looks sort of like this. You dump it in there, and then, then it goes out on a conveyor belt from the back. And one of the things that I forgot to test with the item router that's actually pretty important, I'm going to test it right now, what happens when it receives something that doesn't match any of the filters? Where does this end it? At the bottom, maybe? There's got to be a default, right? Otherwise, I mean, what does it do? Clog up? Uh, just in case it does send it out the bottom, let's raise this up. Oh, I, I had to cut down the maple tree that was here because the belt's going to come out the back. Unfortunately, it's, it was really pretty. Somewhat sweet. But I've got more saplings. In fact, let's plant them right now. Let's put one there. Oh. 
So we'll have this go up. Then go to an item router. So let's say, I don't know, it's got something. North goes that. So it has something in it, but it's not going to receive anything that's on the list. Oh, it just doesn't accept it. Huh. I actually wish I didn't do that. Yeah, I wish there was just like a direction you could set as the other. If it doesn't match anything, it just goes there. Hmm. Well, that sucks. I'm trying to think if there's a way around that. Because I don't want to have to explicitly define everything that's supposed to go to an other. Because I want it to work like you have the mining backpack, you dump everything, and again, you know, ores and stuff that need to be processed go there, but things that just need to be stored like redstone, that, that doesn't need to go to any sort of processing thing, it just needs to be stored. I guess there's not that many of them, so I can just explicitly define them, I suppose? Yeah, I guess that'll be alright. So I'm thinking something like that, kind of a a big cube with a hollowed out center, and it's got a transfer node on the inside. I'm kind of covering it over the top and the side so that you can't see the transfer node, because between the transfer node connecting to the conveyor belt, it looks a little janky and weird. So from the front, it just looks like a chest. Dump it all in. And then I'm going to start to move the conveyor belt up into the sky on, on scaffolding, I think. So let me put that into place. So I've got this huge scaffolding structure that goes all the way up here. This is kind of the main line where everything travels down here. Goes behind all the machines. And then here is where the item router is. And I've got my line already run, at least in scaffolding, all the way over to here. So all the crusher stuff is going to come down here. Drop right on there and go into the crusher. Now I just got to figure out where I want my other lines to go. Alright, so now I've got another line that goes the opposite direction over to the bloomeries for distributing the hematite ore and all those other types of iron ore. Okay, I built a whole another line here for all the items that are going to get returned without processing. So it's kind of ridiculous that it comes all the way over here just to then be returned back to where it came from, but that's what happens. So there's going to be a conveyor belt going this way, basically just right alongside where all the items came in. It's going to go back down. How dare you? But instead of going back down all the way, it's going to go to the top, and uh, hopefully this will fit. I'm, I want to have it, the conveyor belt go down to this chest, which is above the original chest, and it should insert automatically into the chest. I'm pretty sure conveyor belts, although they don't extract automatically from chests, I do believe they insert if they go directly into a chest. So eventually, the items you put in here that don't need to be processed should be returned to this chest right where you started. And it doesn't look too bad. This looks a bit messy. I mean, it looks like some huge roller coaster thing. And this side thing looks a bit strange, but I don't know. I mean, eh, eh, it's kind of cool. I kind of imagine my base is just being a bit hectic and just crammed full of all sorts of conveyor belts. No, oh, it just sounds like a cool idea. Alright, so let me lay down the conveyor belts. There we go, so I don't have it all done, but I just hooked up the system that goes... Oh, it's stuck on the conveyor belts. Uh, just hooked up the system that goes back into the chest, just to try to work out this area here, because I knew it'd be a bit tricky. Uh, and it was. So when I set it up the way I had before, where the conveyor belt went diagonally down directly to this chest. For some reason, the items I put on the conveyor belt ended up going into the diamond chest down below instead of this chest up here. I don't know why. Um, I tried using the dropping conveyor belt directly on top of the oak chest, and that worked. It did insert the items inside of the chest, but unfortunately it made it so that you couldn't open the chest anymore. So I settled instead on just making it a little bit not quite as good looking as I wanted, but the conveyor belt goes directly to a hopper, it inserts into the hopper, and then the hopper itself inserts into the chest. And for whatever reason, if the hopper's above a chest, it's okay with opening. 
so a little bit taller than I wanted it to be, but I made kind of a shroud on top to cover it a bit. Alright, let me finish with the conveyor belt. Haha! -ha! I'm done with all the conveyor belts! That took a lot of conveyor belts. So if it didn't make sense before, here's how it's all laid out. This is the... Whoa. Oh god. Things get a bit funky. This is the main line. Goes all the way over to the router. Haven't routed anything yet, but this is the router. And then stuff that goes out this way goes all the way back. Stuff that goes out this way ends up going to the crusher. And stuff that goes out this way goes to the bloomeries. So let me get some stuff routed. Oh, uh, actually before that, let me show you what I did here at the end of the bloomery. So one kind of awkward thing about using conveyor belts is it's hard to split up items. So I actually did make use of one of these splitters. You know, ideally I would have something that would evenly split everything that comes in this direction between these three bloomeries. Uh, but I think the best I could do is just use a splitter to make it so that I can split it to two different bloomeries. Um, of course I could split the things I already split, but then I, everything has to be in, what, like multiples of two or something? So I need an even number of bloomeries. With three, that doesn't work, so I just split in half and I'm just sending half of them to this bloomery and the other half to this bloomery. So this one I guess I'll take out or decommission or something, I don't know. I'm sure two bloomeries will be fine. Okay, let me get things routed. I want to be able to sort my backpacks, so let's make a button upgrade. Just two stone buttons, two wood buttons, and a piece of paper. Super easy. Well, I guess I want to do it for both, but for now I'll just do it for my mining one. Oh, that's sort. Okay, so now I'm going to take one of everything in my backpack and route it. Okay, ran into a little bit of a problem. Eight slots is not really enough. So this is the line that sends everything back that doesn't need to be processed, and I very, very quickly ran out of spaces. So what I did is I added another line here that comes out the bottom, and it just connects back up with a line of everything that goes back. So now bottom and this one can be used for stuff that needs to be sent back. Okay, I think I have it fully configured. I also had to make use of the top slot to get more ores in here. Didn't have enough room. Yeah, wow, let's let's try it out. I'm excited. One thing though that's going to be kind of awkward about it is it's only going to be placed on the conveyor belt at the rate that a single transfer node can transfer stuff. It's not going to be very fast. So, let me um, let me prep something. Okay, so I took out most of the quantity of the items, so all the items are still the same, but I just made sure that there was no more than roughly 10 of each, so that it shouldn't take too long to get through each one, because I want to see this thing in action and not have to just stare at it for like an hour <laughs> to watch everything process through. So, sneak and right click on the diamond chest should dump the whole thing. Yep, alright, it's been dumped out, should be going. Let's watch what happens at the junction. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Wish I had a better vantage point. Ugh. Hold on. Yep, so that should be sent back. It's coal. Diamond should be sent back as well. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> it's beautiful. So all that stuff should be sent back while we're waiting for that. Let's go watch this stuff fall into the crusher. There it goes, it's getting crushed. Send back, send back. Yeah, it's getting through all the send back stuff. Let's make sure everything's routed well. Oh, we got some other stuff that should be sent to the crusher. This is so exciting. Why is this so exciting? Bloop. 
There it goes. More Crusher stuff, uranium ore. That's quartz. Sirtis quartz, that should be sent back. <laughs> Look at it go. Oh. Uh, I think the dots are going to go down below. Yep, go in the other pathway. That's crusher stuff, crusher stuff. I'm pretty sure the stuff at the end, that the bottom is the stuff that goes that way. Just the way it got sorted in the bag. All the different iron ores and stuff. So that gets crushed, that's going on the top path. It's going on the bottom path to get sent back. This is beautiful, it's a work of art. More crusher stuff. It's worth noting that, by the way, this is terrible for performance. I mean, using just a transfer node where you can't see anything, and if the items being transferred would be way more efficient, but I don't care. Because this is cool. This is really cool. Yeah, this is why I took out a bunch of items. Imagine if I hadn't, we'd probably still be watching. Oh, we're almost through all of them. I think copper is one of the last ones. Uh, we'd be just watching like coal transfer or redstone particularly just transfer forever look at it go oh I think that's the hematite I think so so that stuff should start to go in that direction let's see yep there it goes okay so let's go watch it get split it should be split and go into the different bloomeries Left, right, left, right. I think I just accidentally picked that up. My bad. Should automatically get put into those two chests, which should then automatically start going into these two bloomeries. Um, nothing on this one yet? Why nothing? Oh! Dirt. That wasn't supposed to be in there. Okay. That's an easy fix. Yeah, it's getting split. It's working beautifully. There wasn't too much of that to process, so it's already done. Yeah, I guess I forgot to set dirt or something, so we can just add that to the send back. This one. And now if we go back here... Everything's transferred through the system now. I'm sure the crusher is very, very busy crushing. And everything should be returned to the top chest. <laughs> Look at that. That is so cool. Oh my god. It's not the most extensible kind of thing. I mean, if I get like many, many, many more varieties of ore, which I probably won't, but... As I get more, I'll have to add it to the filter. And at some point, it's just not going to fit. And then I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm still glad I made it, even if it does end up biting me in the ass later, because it's cool. It's so cool. So I'm just going to toss the rest of this stuff in. So all the stuff's going to go inside. And there it goes. All right, well, I think I'm going to end this episode here. Made a lot of progress, a lot more than I thought. I thought I'd maybe just make those tools, the resonator and the thermionic whatever fabricator. But made three new tools, finished those quests, and actually finished building this thing. Um, I feel like there was a quest I didn't claim. Yeah, this one. Palace Crystals and Restonia. Okay, so now every single thing on this first page is done, except for embers, which we should be able to complete. In fact, let's just, heck, let's just go see if we can do that right now real quick. Finish out the very first page of the quest log. Three ember crystals. I think we need four, and I think I have one in storage. There it is. 
Yeah, there it is. Oh. Oh, see, now that's just silly. It also needs to detect that you have... I don't know, I guess that you have the Ember Activator and Ember Boar. The way HQM works, that's hardcore questing mode, the mod that gives you this this book and the and the quests. Sometimes it needs the item to actually actively be in your inventory, which can be really annoying because if it's a machine and you've already set the machine up, and then it's like, you don't have the machine in your inventory, so the quest isn't complete, and then you gotta like tear the machine up and get it in your inventory just to be able to detect it as done. So what I'm going to do for those is, this is like the edit the quests thing. I'm just going to do that to force this to be done, because it is done. I just don't want to tear up the machines to, you know, mark it as such. So unlocked. Hey, you're done, because I am actually done. Resonating ore or ember shards, I'll take the resonating ore. And we are 100% done with this first part, which looks to have opened up the second and third part. Nice. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I have no idea what I'm going to do, just like last time, but I'm sure it'll be fun.